Hi, I'm Rishi and thanks for stopping by my channel. I'm a practicing nutritionist with a background in human physiology and nutritional sciences. I take a holistic, scientific approach to health and wellness, using food and lifestyle changes to optimize one's nutrition, promoting longevity and healthy aging. So if you want to hack your health span and be the best version of yourself, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss anything. Now the third component is meal frequency or how many meals you eat in a day. My best advice is to try and stick to between two meals and a snack or three complete meals in a day. For someone relatively advanced, it may also be fine to have up to four meals in a day. The key is to ensure that in each of those meals, you ingest a significant amount of protein. Ideally, just divide the total protein you are to consume for the day, which is 140 grams of protein for an 80 kilogram individual, by the total number of meals you plan to eat, keeping protein equal across each meal. This is essential for building new muscle, repairing existing muscle while minimizing muscle loss. So for the example of three meals in a day, it would be 140 grams divided by three or 47 grams of protein per meal. And as I've said before, it's vital that during this fat loss phase, the more muscle that we can conserve and prevent losing, the higher will our metabolic rate be, which will directly result in us burning more fat from our stores while even at rest. So two to four meals are typically ideal for a fat loss phase. Moving on to the fourth and last component, which is meal timing. This means when to eat in the day. However, it depends on how you structure your day, your wake and sleep times, and what time of day you typically exercise. Normally, I tell people to eat at whatever times best suit them and their lifestyle, but there's one time I would recommend consuming the bulk of your calories, and that is after your training session for the day. This is because during the post-workout window, which is up to three hours after your workout, is when your body is most glycogen depleted. This is the time when both the liver and muscles are most insulin sensitive, glycogen deprived, and primed for growth, making it the best time to give your body carbohydrates. Let me make this simpler. Have the majority of your carbs for the day in the meal that is after your workout. This meal should be especially high in protein in case your other meals haven't been. Also, this post-workout meal should have the lowest fat content. This is the only recommendation I have for meal timing. Otherwise, all your other meals may be had at times most convenient for you, your lifestyle and routine. So this was a complete step-by-step -step guide to creating a complete customized diet plan for yourself when trying to drop weight and body fat. Now, two weeks down the line, if you've been following this plan and feel your weight is not really dropping, then I'd recommend lowering carbs another 50 grams from your diet which will account for a further decrease of 200 calories from your diet. This should help you drop weight quicker. Conversely, two weeks into this diet, if you feel like you're dropping weight quite fast and you're feeling tired, low in energy or motivation and have more food cravings, then I'd recommend adding 50 grams of carbs to your diet, which will increase your total calories by 200. These extra 50 grams should come from whole grains like oats, sweet potatoes, wheat or wild rice. It'll help you get your energy and motivation levels back up and promote healthier fat loss. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you learned something new and got value from it. If you did, then please consider subscribing and hitting that like button. Drop me a comment if you have any feedback for me.